Have you recently discovered your human design projector? You probably saw your body graph chart and had a mild freak out wondering what the hell everything even means. Well, don't worry, I'm here to help you get clear on what it means to be a projector and how all this human design information can even help you be the best, most authentic version of yourself and help you live your most abundant and fulfilled lives. And by the end of this video, you'll get the 411 on the human design projector as we answer the basics like, what does your energy type mean? How is your energy type determined? What are the characteristics of the projector aura? what is the projector strategy and what are the projector not self and signature themes so if you enjoy this video and want to learn and continue to deepen your understanding of human design i'd be so grateful if you could show me some love give this video a like and subscribe to my channel and with that said hi my name is crystal alferrero and i'm your fun loving human design certified business coach and host of the magnetic self podcast and I'm also your fellow projector. And when I learned that I was a human design projector and learned what that meant and how it affected the way that I live my life, it was literally like someone was reading into my soul. And it felt like such a huge relief to know that I wasn't alone in my struggles of trying to keep up with the fast pace of life and honestly feeling that chronic exhaustion, pushing myself to do so. And so my personal experimentation with human design really started when I was at a crossroads in my business and I was doing all the things, listening to everything that I thought I should be doing and basically what others told me that I should be doing, which really just left me burnt out and frustrated. And as a projector, and as you'll learn as we go on and we go into this deeper, it was a huge relief to learn that we are not here to do the hard labor. And no, I don't mean that as a cop out. And it doesn't mean that our capacity for success is any less than any other type. It doesn't mean that we're lazy or get a free ride because projectors are quite honestly, some of the hardest working people on this planet. Just look at Gary Vee and Obama. But what it does mean is that we're meant to stay in our lane, focus on what we're good at and do them efficiently. And the issue comes for us when we try to live our lives according to our conditioning and basically what others tell us, what we believe we should do, and we push ourselves and ignore our own natural rhythm. So to kick things off, let's just talk about what your type means and why this even matters. So what does your energy type even mean? Well, according to human design, humanity is distinguished between four different types, each with a different role that we were meant to carry out in the world. And when we talk about type, we're talking about essentially your aura. And each type has a different way of operating energetically and is based on our understanding of subtle energy and how we communicate on an unconscious level through our aura and how they are determined is essentially that each person is imprinted into this world with specific genetic traits that we were essentially born into this world with to share with others and really live out our highest purpose. And the specific unique traits that are defined in your chart, so through your gates and your channels, essentially those lines that you see in your body graph, ultimately determine your type, which is expressed through your aura and how we communicate and how others experience us. And specifically, there are two things that stand out in the projector charts. So first of all, they have an undefined sacral center. So this square in the middle, your sacral center is not colored in within your body graph chart, unlike generators. And secondly, there is no motor connection with the throat. So there's no built in potential for manifesting. And that doesn't mean that we can't. It's just that we have a different method of doing so other than what we're traditionally taught. And motors can be any of the four centers that are boxed in right there. So it can be the heart center, the sacral center, the solar plexus, or root. So what are the characteristics of the projector aura type? Well, projectors are a fairly new type that came into existence after 1781 and make up around 21% of the population. Before this time, they didn't exist simply because there was no need for them. It was the manifestors who were ruling at the top and the generators who were essentially below them and were slaves, constructing and building their empires and the worlds beneath them. And up until recently, it was the manifestors and generators who took up the majority of leadership positions around the world and essentially created the environment and the society that we currently live in. But 
As we shift into a new paradigm, it will be the projectors that are supposed to move into these leadership positions and really take the world into a new direction and show us a new way of working. And what sets projectors apart from the other types is that we have a focused and penetrating aura that interacts with other auras at deeper energetic levels. And this gives us the gift to really understand others and recognize the gifts of other people. And using these gifts along with their capacity to see the bigger picture makes them amazing guides, which really is their primary role as projectors. Secondly, projectors are non-energy types, which means that they do not create or initiate new energy. So what that means is that they don't have a consistent source of energy, and that's why we get burnt out so easily. And it's by following our strategy that we're able to maximize our energy potential and kind of move through life with more ease. And what is the projector strategy? Well, first of all, strategy is how your aura type is meant to interact with the world around you. It's the most important tool in human design that allows you to work with your energy rather than against it so that you're met with less resistance through your life. And the projector strategy specifically is to wait for the invitation. And when you use that strategy along with your authority in human design, you'll flow through life with more ease and flow. And to clarify, this strategy doesn't apply to every single decision that you make. Like you don't need permission to do things in your daily life that you wanna do. You don't need permission to follow your passions. And as a guideline, using this strategy generally applies to the four major life categories or life decisions. So love, career, friendship, and if you're considering moving. So instead of constant initiating and draining your energy, this really means nourishing yourself, following your bliss, mastering your craft, so that you put yourself in a good position to be recognized and therefore be extended invites for different opportunities. So attracting those invites and those opportunities. And my rule of thumb is that I usually use a strategy where there is a large energetic exchange between two people that's required in order to fulfill or obtain something. For example, relationships and choosing your partner or choosing a place to live and even client relationships where you are helping them through a transformation using your skills. Again, there's no concrete rules. Your strategy is never meant to limit you in the way that you live your life, but rather enhance it and offer you a way to get your energy to work with you as well as leverage the energy of others. And one thing to understand is that our auras have a provocative nature. Projector auras provoke recognition and the invitation by other people. And we were designed to be magnetic. So when you're truly living your design and your strategy, things are going to be attracted to you and your aura. I will have another in-depth video on the projector strategy and how to wait for the invitation. Um, but essentially living according to your correct strategy for your type allows you to make efficient use of your energy so that you find more balance and flow in your life. So to all my fellow projectors who have done the body graph chart already, um, definitely let me know in the comments what type of projector you are. I am a 1-3 splenic projector. If that rings a bell or if that makes sense to anyone here but yeah just definitely let me know splenic means that that's my authority and one three that is essentially the role or the profile that i am here to essentially play in this world so what is the not self and signature theme well each type has what's called the not self and signature themes and you can think of these kind of as signposts or signals as to whether or not you're living out your true self your not self theme is what you'll experience when you make decisions through your conditioning and mental reasoning as opposed to your authority and strategy. And as a result, you'll face resistance. So for projectors, the not self theme is bitterness. And to give you, you know, a more in-depth example, let's say you're a projector entrepreneur and you're out there and you're constantly initiating and out there searching and pitching to potential clients, just like the whole world kind of tells us we should do rather than using your strategy of waiting for the invite. What will happen is that you'll likely face resistance and rejection, and because you're not using your energetic resources efficiently and effectively as you could be, this is what causes exhaustion and bitterness, especially when you can't keep up with your generator counterparts and you just don't see the results that you want. And this is what I've actually experienced personally. 
So fortunately, the signature theme for projectors is success. And this is what you'll experience as the norm in your life if you are living according to your strategy and authority. And you get here, of course, by using your strategy and waiting for the invitation for the big decisions in your life and for all those kind of transactions where there's an energetic exchange. So for an example, as an example, in my business, like I mentioned, I was typically just constantly out there initiating and engaging in activities that completely drained me, things that I was told I should be doing. So I decided to experiment with my human design strategy of waiting for the invitation. And I started with just by taking inventory of those activities that really drained me, specifically from a marketing perspective and trying to gain visibility. And what I was doing before was I was engaging in a lot of Instagram tactics that quite frankly did not feel aligned to me. Not that I was cold DMing or anything like that, but just that I didn't feel aligned to. So what I did was I stopped doing those things that, that just constantly drained me and that constant initiating. And I leaned into my strategy of waiting for the invitation. And it didn't mean that I didn't do anything. Um, it just meant that I aligned my visibility strategy to my human design strategy and my energy. And what I did was focus more on attraction marketing and focused on my learning and my content platforms and serving from a place of passion rather than pressuring myself to constantly engage. So. As a result, I ended up starting my podcast and note that I didn't wait for an invite to start my podcast because that's something that I enjoyed and I felt called to do. And by doing this from a place of passion, I wasn't engaging in energy training activities and I was still in a good place to receive that invite. And by leaning into my passions and sharing my expertise, I put myself in a great position to be recognized by others who saw value in what I had to offer. And this isn't what I would necessarily recommend for everyone, but this is definitely a strategy that worked for me personally. And by doing this, I've received invites to speak on other podcasts, events, and even had discovery calls booked out of nowhere. And honestly, I had never felt this type of flow in my business before. So again, it's not about not working. It's about engaging in things that don't drain your energy. It's about leveraging your strengths and what you like to do to still achieve your goals while practicing patience and also trust in the universe that you are designed to attract these opportunities without you working yourself into the ground and doing things that just don't feel good to you. And just to clarify, there is no good or bad type. There's no type that necessarily has more probability of wealth, success, and happiness. It just means that the way we were designed to obtain our desires and manifest the things in our life are different. Therefore, the approaches to life that we should implement should also be different and unique to us and unique to our energy type. And that brings me to the end of this episode where we answered all of your projector questions, including what is your energy type? How is your energy type determined? What is the projector aura? what is the projector strategy, and what are the not self and signature themes. And I also wanted to add a disclaimer to take everything that I say and teach you with a grain of salt. You don't have to believe anything that I say, and you don't need to take the human design system as concrete rules because ultimately human design is an experiment. So now it's your turn to experiment with your human design strategy and find out if it's something that works for you so that you can take control of how your life unfolds rather than remaining a byproduct of it. With that said, I hope you enjoyed this video and I would be so grateful if you could show me some love, hit that like button and subscribe to learning more about the wonderful human design system. So with that said, have an amazing day or evening wherever you are and I will catch you in the next video. Bye.